On today's Minute of the Apes, we get our heads away from current news and back into apes. Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Movies, one minute at a time. I've got two lovely co-hosts across from me. Wait, Excuse- who are those? I know, exactly. Oh, what? I don't see anybody else in this room. Uh, Could you introduce yourself, sir? Richard. Okay, and you? Hi, my name is Sean. Okay, you're fired. I like you. <laughs> I <I'm a> can't. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I like walks on the beach. Oh, ooh, uh, we're doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're minute twenty-two. Sean, tell us what's going on with minute twenty-two. All right, we're starting minute twenty-two with a general asking, "Why? Why would astronauts be doing in a zoo?" And ends with a Japanese newsreader. Let's take a listen to this very white moment of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. What would astronauts be doing in a zoo, Mr. President? They are not astronauts, General Faulkner. They are apes. Chimpanzees, to be more precise. They are harmless, friendly, and by all reports, extremely intelligent and sophisticated creatures. But, naturally, being animals, they cannot tell us where the ship came from or how they came to be in it. I have therefore decided to convene a presidential commission of inquiry in Los Angeles tomorrow. The two surviving apes will be presented to the commission for their inspection. The press will be invited to attend, not to participate. I don't believe that we can withhold this extraordinary discovery from the world any longer. Trois singes, des chimpanzés pour être précis, ont atterri de l'espace dans les eaux de la côte de Californie. Aber zum Erstaunen des amerikanischen Militärs, nicht mit Astronauten, sondern mit Affen. Amerika jinde wa naku, mata ningen de mo... All right, as a minute 22, we have a planet's worth of humans plus two living apes and one dead ape. There's a really long text of explanation from the president just now. It let off the paragraph. Yeah. I, uh, paragraph. Right off, right, let off the minute. It was just like, let me explain to you all these things that we as an audience already know, but for some reason <laughs> I have to tell this entire – we didn't have to hear any of this. Which well, is exactly why I hate these kind of moments yeah. because you can – if you intelligently create the moment where we meet new characters and they're talking about what we know, you don't have to – have the moment of them being explained what's happened. Mm -hmm. They're reacting to what's happened because they're the fucking president of the United States. They're his senior staff. They've got the information. I mean, the most that he probably should have told us is that I've I've, uh, convened a presidential commission of inquiry in Los Angeles tomorrow where we actually get to meet these aponauts. So so (laughs) they know know they're apes, correct? I mean, Uh that's... Yeah, the two surviving apes will be produced for the commission's inspection. I mean, I mean, he says they're chimpanzees specifically. You know, uh, they're not astronaut General Falker. They they are apes, chimpanzees to be precise. Stunned silence, according to the script, and then just one half a page of nothing but the president's. I'm looking at the script, nothing mm-hmm. but half a page it's of a his block of text. Thing. Yeah. So what what hits me is curious right away, and and forgive me if I missed it. No one in this moment says they can talk because we have to hold that moment for later. That revelation, however. Would that not be the first thing that Dixon and Stevie and all that good alert the powers that be that they can talk? Or is this this happen, moment happening so concurrent to the moment that we saw in the cage that that information hasn't been passed up, up the chain yet? Oh, I'm sure he. I mean, sure. I mean, he says they're harmless, they're friendly, but all reports extremely intelligent, sophisticated creatures. But being animals, they cannot animals. Uh, being animals, they cannot tell us the ship they came from or how they got it. Uh, I have therefore decided to convene a presidential commission of inquiry tomorrow in Los Angeles. The two surviving apes will be produced for the commission's inspection. Now, there is there is some um, uh, omitted dialogue consisting of leading experts in all fields relevant to zoological, biological, psychological, medical, mathematical, historical, or physical, or even spiritual. No one talks like so that. So like everybody then? Yeah, I know. They had basically to take that out. Yeah. Uh, so he really doesn't say that they talk. Uh, they struck a line where he says no television coverage. Um, but the line continues, the press will be invited to attend, but not participate. Uh, but I don't believe we can withhold this extraordinary discovery from the rest of the world. So they don't know that they can talk. They because, don't at this point. Other because than he's even saying they can't tell us. They're in, extremely intelligent means that apes can pick up a block and put it in a hole. Or fly a ship but this, somehow. This, so. I, this idea of a commission is just really, really interesting. We're going to have this panel. We're going to bring these extremely intelligent apes, two of them, because one of them died. I don't know. There's, there's just a, uh, 
I don't know why a commission would make sense. Press will be there. No television. I, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It just seems a little odd. So I, I didn't think of it until just now because I was kind of looking ahead into the next minute of notes. You could almost remove this entire scene from the movie. And cut to the next moment where we're in. Yeah, just to at least had a, the the panel member saying we're on this presidential commission to right find out the what's pre- going on, it, yeah. because you don't need this if you went right to these people and we know what we know and it, it goes to what I, I think we were all kind of alluding to before. There's it's a very odd calm scene. You know, they're they're fucking apes landed in a spaceship. We know they can talk. They haven't found out, but still, there should be a bit of concern here. And at least in this next moment, where it's a bunch of walking and talking people trying to interview, we get that chaos. The, well, they, they go to the we, so we see the the German news that we see the French, the German, and we see the the Japanese, Japanese in yeah. the living room. I think what they're trying to do with these two moments is build kind of this drama and excitement into the actual commission itself. Because otherwise, why would, why would we do the newscasts, right? Why, why would we have those moments where we have reporters talking? Um, what I found really unusual, if, okay, if we're, if we're going past this paragraph, we go to, um, the French reporter, we go through the, or newsman, we have the, uh, German anchor, and then we go to kind of this, uh, what appears to be a Japanese living room set. So I kind of went down a rabbit hole of looking at television sets from the 1960s, 1970s to kind of get a sense of what they were. And while you would see wood colors and wood grain colors around, you would never really have just a desk behind a wall with two plants beside it. Mm-hmm. So it felt like they just found a hallway and threw two newsrooms together that didn't really look like newsrooms. In fact, they could have just been by side by side by the way the panels look, the wood paneling. No, I, I, I like your explanation that at least this is a transition because technically we do go to the the news reports. I, I If you had – I. I would like to hear a news report instead that the, the spaceship has been found as the first bit of information. We're telling the whole world about it. Or that yeah, that I did mean, it. But I did find it interesting, at least according to my notes, and tell me if I'm wrong, the first one we go to is in French, correct? Correct. correct. Which French, Pierre German, Boulle, being our original author, I at least find an interesting choice. And I would imagine... A, you think that's a nod to him? I would think it's an intentional nod. At, at least that's the way I saw it. it was, oh, they're going to be polite to Boulle and, and go in French. Because, again, this film at least... From the perspective of, we go back to Planet of the Apes, why did they choose to, to make Ape a They said it was for um, budget reasons, but really the truth is they wanted to have more of a red herring type thing of where are you we so that, they yeah. could do it at the end. I, I at least think this film is more in line with Bull's original concept, which is you land okay. on the exact same thing. thing that you were in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, the basically, uh, Dane did not give kind of instructions on at least the first three things that we see. Well, the, I was about the, to ask, the in French. the script, do they translate it in the script? Because if, I found it kind of odd that they didn't translate it or put a subtitle up for in the movies when the people were No, talking. it's specifically the monta- montage, the story breaks. Okay. Um, it does go into detail for the broadcast after the Japanese one, the BBC broadcast. We can talk about that next minute. But yeah, I was just, I, I did look at those two moments. I looked at the, the, the French TV and while they had a camera that said, you know, en français or whatever it said you know <laughs> they didn't they, they cut to a, the eiffel tower then to the newsreader yeah well i mean they, they had the camera they specifically had the language i need to get to the moment to actually see the language but it was right. it did say français something français but the, again it was still literally just a hallway that was wood paneled with two plants behind it and a desk and there's i could not find any photos of tv newsrooms that looked like that at the moment, at that, at this particular time. So I don't know. Now the, the, yeah, a radio television français. So it's uh, a wood panel. It's got some lights. It's got a two plants. It's got a desk. It's got a, a cabinet. And I wonder if these were intended to be like French designs, you know, to make it kind of look like it's, it's there as opposed to actually build an entire newsroom. They just need to put a baguette up there, some front stretching, exactly. some exactly. French fries. They've got the boom mic in the shot, so you right. can kind of make it look like they're being recorded. They're recording it, but he's literally just at a desk, like he's not really even doing anything. He's, he looks at the camera, and then we go to German NDR Hamburg, and again, he's at a desk behind like a hallway with two plants behind him and a water glass, so he can drink some water on on set. I mean, it's really they really kind of force these to kind of happen. I- I'm sorry. You right. had something else to say. You were gonna. You wanted to bring up. I think last time, the, specifically the Japanese scenario, where we had the family watching uh, TV in Japan. I know I had a point about that. Now, you. I think you were saying something. Like it seemed slightly like. Oh, racist. I, I were, do recall that. That I. 
I thought that the representation of that was, especially for the time that this would have come out, mm -hmm. right in line with how they would have treated a Japanese, Chinese, American mean, type family they, where it was very they don't direct. Have Mickey Rooney in there. And they don't go so far <laughs> as breakfast at Tiffany's, yeah. but it still is very, it's almost like you expect them to, to look like the, um, the representation you used to see in the Warner Brothers films that were propaganda. Uh, like uh, so that, the cartoons, the rice paddy field hats on and little glasses and, uh, and talking, oh, you teeth. know, doing it with, with that very, very stereotypical, stereotypical delivery. Well, now, now that I'm actually, I had this actually, now I will say this when I was looking up TV studios uh, of the sixties and seventies to kind of get a sense of what they looked like, this, this framing of the scene with the mm -hmm. television set and then the nuclear family sitting and watching it mm -hmm. was common. Like yeah. I saw lots of shots of that supposedly from this era of people watching TV together around the television set kind of in the corner of a room mm -hmm. with a family around it. Um, the, the, there are two points that I want to make that now that I have it actually in kind of a freeze frame still, we see the family from the back. We never actually see the family from the front. And I'm not entirely sure that these are Japanese, Asian, or they actually, just from the color of their hair, they have very, very brown American hair, except for like one guy, the mm -hmm. dad. Everybody else kind of has almost – they look like they're American children. But they wouldn't the be back. American watching a Japanese broadcast. But just from the staging of this, the fact that we I never see it. their faces, they look like American children. I could be wrong. So as you say the staging, that comes to this. And this is the first time where I felt like, hey, let's, let's discuss a hypothetical different way of directing this film. We've had the winky, sweet comedy with Cornelius, Zira, Stevie, and Dixon, where they're, they're right. opposites of, of each other. Usually, as we said, you don't want to, in a comedy, grind your gears to go to something serious. However, what could have been done that I think the better choice would have been to go to these TV broadcasts? You could eat because as soon as I see TV broadcast that says it's hitting the populace, I know the populace now knows about it. They aren't giving, they are telling us enough that we need to know that even the media knows. Why not then cut to the president watching those TV broadcasts and someone says we've convened the special committee. Thank you. You know, and at least he knows it's a more succinct way. It changes the gears without it feeling like, why did we go to this weird expository scene? Well, and we, and we have three of them in a row and we're going to get into more in the next minute. I mean, it's not even like it's, it's like, uh, the subtlety of one or two, they want us to know that this news is broadcasting around the world, that right. this is now getting the attention of the and world. And I get that. But and the we, president would be seeing the, you know, different feeds and all that. So you could do that. I was going to ask this question just because I, I'm, uh, I'm a little green on how this technology works. But in the, in the scene with ja in, the, in, in the Japanese scene, we specifically have a broadcaster on a television with a perfectly clear picture. Uh -huh. How are they? Is that a monitor? Is he, is he on the I'd other? I'd have to see it. Is he on the other side? Like, I thought you couldn't film a television they, show. You can't. They would, that's a, they've imposed yeah, that's that. A, that's a they, they, green screen on there or something. Okay, they were, they, I now see what you're saying about this Japanese family. Because the mom is wearing a Komodo. The girl is wearing some derivative of it. The dad has a very, his hair is very black with a deep <clears> sheen. So very, you very think dark. it's Asian. But the son's wearing plaid and he looks like he has brown hair. It's, it's almost very, like, very brown hair, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like they forgot to cast an Asian American to play the part of the son. Or even I the daughter. I mean, the daughter's hair itself is very, very kind of, yeah, uh, you're right. Kind of, kind of, kind of a rich brown that's a but, little more natural. But I'm asking specifically yeah. about that. The, the, the how do they, the, they've, they've imposed that. They're, it wouldn't, you can, now you can shoot a monitor if you get your, your frame rates in sync. And they have sync generators that allow that to happen. Nowadays, they wouldn't even really, really wouldn't worry about that too much. It'll cause a roll line because the, yeah. the frames are out of sync. But Am that, that they would have. I'm sorry. Oh, that's our, our no dryer wall, just yeah. went off. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, it plays pretty music. Isn't uh -huh. that nice? No, I just was, I was just kind of struck by yeah. the, how clear the picture was on that screen there. And I was trying to figure out how they were doing that's that. That's also a very odd shot in that it's so clear because really your eye would not see that depth of focus. Usually the parent would be out of focus just slightly as the eye went into that. But what they're doing right there, there's so much information that's in focus. Just his shoulder and the information in the, the far right hand is out of focus. Right. Yeah. That's and just very weird because he, there's nothing that draws your eye to the middle the way that slightly out of focus to focus would I work. I see. There, well, I mean, there's even an out of focus figure right here in the foreground. Yeah. That's unusual. That I guess you're supposed to let you know that we're actually in, uh, Japan or, or somewhere along those lines. So, so are the walls, which are those. And I don't know what those kind of uh, half walls, like par partial yeah, walls. They have those that are like yeah. little frames with paper type. I don't know what that's called. No, just an odd sculpture in the background. Like it really was just like, it is a forest of uh, yeah. Japanese type yeah. Asian American, Asian type scene. It is. Yeah. Very much so. All but right. not, but not for comedy. Like 
there's an opportunity here to be comedic. I don't know how you would do that without being too terribly... Like, 